Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor, it's always good to have you here joining oh, us. thank you, John. You're <laughs> so kind. Uh, you know, Pastor, when people talk about the hippie movement and the Jesus revolution and talk about the the time, when, when somebody hears of the, the name or the word hippie, they think of peace and love, and you, you see those things. But the reality is, is that a lot of these people that came out of that, in, came into the Jesus movement, were dealing with some really crazy stuff. And I wanted to ask you about that side that's not really spoken about a whole lot when people like yourself are coming out of the hippie movement and, and gave your life to Christ and the, the transformation the gospel had in your life and other hippies' life. But I don't hear too much about some of the things that the hippies were going through at that time. You know, during the day that, um, that I got saved in the late 60s, early 70s, is when the uh, what were called the hippies... Um, actually came into being and I don't remember um, I don't remember it being something that was necessarily contrived it wasn't something that somebody was standing up and saying we need to be hippies mm. <laughs> so as movements go it was something that was basically um, done uh, or occurred I'd say in a real organic way there were so many different things that were contributing to the attitudes of those who were called hippies at that time. We, were, we as a, a, a nation and uh, in, even into the world, we're, we're dealing with a number of things that are in, in many ways very similar to what we're dealing with now. We had a war that was going on, you know. Uh, not, not everybody was very supportive of that. Um, we were pouring millions into the billions of uh, dollars of American resources into uh, trying to prop up uh, what became South Vietnam. Uh, American treasure and blood was being spilt on foreign soil and and we didn't see, many of us didn't see the reasonableness of that. When you have so many things that you need to be dealing with here in the United States, why are we pouring billions of dollars into into an, an, another country that ultimately, in our case, we saw, ultimately did no good. It fell. And we, we wondered about that. We wondered about the expense of human life, and we wondered about the, the climate. You know, at that time, we were concerned about the fact that our scientists, who were, we call them scientists, priests, um, they all thought that we um, were going to freeze. There were... Uh, riots in the streets that began to happen. There was a music revolution mm -hmm. where uh, politics became something you, you, you made as a lyric in a song of protest. And so there was all that kind of stuff. And in the midst of that, people will sometimes look at it and they'll say, well, you know, there are so many similarities to then and now. And the fact is the now is <clears throat> only the fruit of what was the then because um, what was then was experiment. What is now has become fabric. And so not everybody did drugs. It wasn't that all people were tuning in and dropping out. It was a small segment. <laughs> and the ones who were doing that uh, were, were not considered to be a reflection of the best of American society. Somehow it seems that that kind of mentality has now developed so that people, you know, are marching for the right to, to destroy their brains with, uh, with, uh, with uh, LSD or with uh, magic mushroom or, or let's legalize pot. And you know, we we through the hippie movement we destroyed the uh, the pillar of marriage and we brought in a uh, nihilism. Mm -hmm. we, we 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 became. Um, callous and corrupt. And that's what we see today. You know, politicians who are, are making millions of dollars uh, by being politicians and nobody questioning it anymore. It's just an amazing thing. So getting back to the question, the hippies, um, we were really more in, into peace, love, but we did that through free sex and drugs. And there was an awful lot of drug use the introduction of a variety of things at that time that ultimately, I think, have contributed to the destruction of the family and the nation that we live in. 
um, people who got caught up with that, um, many of them um, became addicted. Many of them dropped out. And what we're seeing today is the fruit of that. So, John, I, I still believe to this day that the only message that changes a life is the gospel mm -hmm. message. And <clears throat> when we were told about love, which we were actually protesting for and marching for somewhere I didn't, or partying for, um, we found that in the ultimate hippie, Jesus Christ. That's what we used to refer to him as and consider him in the sense that he was the perfect man who was a man of peace and man of love, a man of joy, a man of purpose, a man of sacrifice, one who really truly cared about humanity, who really did make us brothers and brothers and sisters. And and uh, I, I think that the thing that people don't talk about very much, they don't mention in this whole hippie revolution kind of thing, was the continual use of drugs and the destruction that it wrought upon our our lives and families and relationships and and we haven't learned this nation hasn't learned mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to legalize them so we can tax them because we have a government that is bent on spending money it didn't earn taking money and using it in ways that none of us would really vote for they just do it and so a lot of what we see take place now is just a fruit of the rebellion of, of the hippie revolution and the people who at one time were the hippies became the lawyers and then the politicians. And ultimately, many of them became the corrupt leaders of this nation. So we need a revival once again. We need to awaken to these things. And if we don't, this nation uh, can't survive the way it is. And that comes through the gospel. It's the only way, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only way. That's what changed my life. That's what changed your life and so many people in this church. It's the gospel. We need to preach that and keep that the center of everything we do. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for sharing that with us. And with that, we want to invite you guys to our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. And are you in Acts chapter 11, still in chapter I'll be 11? concluding chapter 11 on Sunday. It's been a very fruitful study. I want for to... you, it gives you good nap time. <laughs> I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. It's been uh, really good. If you haven't seen our services, you can go to our Facebook page or to our YouTube page at Calvary Chapel Chino Valley, and you can look up all Pastor David's sermons there and, and catch up. But we do look forward to seeing you come join us in person. Invite your friends and family to join us. Uh, thank you again for tuning in, and God bless you.